sort of mahogany. It's not quite sure. Right? And uh, what I'll do is, uh, so I, again, I, I look at the, the grain. And in this case, it's, uh, it's rising in this direction. So I, I will have a plane in this direction. But I'm just preparing the wood now. And I've started to prepare it already. You can see the difference from uh, what it looked like originally to, to now. And so this guy. So this is a work holding system I use with this in conjunction with this. It's a little beefier than just using a, a bench top and it plugs in. So I have two similar workbenches and it's plug compatible with both. So again, this, this part keeps it from pivoting and the bench dog locks it in. So again, it's customized to, uh, to your workbench. And uh, in this case, uh, the important part is the offset from the edge of the workbench. And uh, very easy to make, by the way. It's just, uh, I made so many of these. I have, there's another one there, tons of these. And I have also this version, it's an earlier version. So this actually, the issue with this is that it did rotate. So I would uh, plug it in and uh, you can offset it. And, uh, but it did rotate. So I tend not to use that one as much now. I use this, this system. So the other, the other advantage of this type of work holding is I can actually raise it. I don't have to have it. If, if the board is pretty uh, thick, as in this case, I can actually raise this. It's locked in. Now, the demonstration I'm going to give is how to prepare a uh, rough plank using a totally different type of uh, hand plane. It's called a scrub plane. It's, uh, it's a specialty plane, but it's it's designed uh, with a very large mouth and a highly cambered blade. So it's quite a bit of a curve on that. And the reason for the highly high camber is to remove material only in the middle. So it's just, uh, it's called hogging out material, hogging material from a board. And because of its, its camber, it really only works in this limited area that protrudes from the, uh, from the mouth. And uh, so it's a specialty plane. It's really, really only designed to prepare a board and remove the, uh, the surface of it, the rough surface. And so you can, we can use a jointer after to dress it. So I'll just give you an idea. This is, just, uh, I could increase the depth, but I'll just give you. the depth a little bit. So because, because I'm working diagonally this cleans up the board. cleans up the surface and it makes a huge mess too but uh, this is this is how it used to be done before before thickness planers and jointers so you can see the what it looks like now and what it looked like originally or even at the far end so this actually cleans it up and then we can take a uh, we can take a, a jointer plane Uh, 
I normally don't have this much this much uh, tools on the workbench. That's why I have to keep putting things away okay. for this demonstration. But the next phase of this is to use a long, a long sole plane uh, number six and above to uh, to write out the uh, the ebbs and the flows, the high points of the board. So I run that across. So I do have a uh, a metal version of number seven, and you notice a progression of number four, five, six, seven. The seven is almost as long as a jointer gets, although there is a number eight, but the disadvantage of a number eight, which I don't even own and purposely don't own, is because it's, it's very extremely heavy. So you could go and use a, a wood body plane. Now this is, a, this is a series of planes I developed. Again, I was uh, keen on making my own tools and marketing them over a period of years. This is, believe it or not, these tools are, I was marketing them 22 years ago, and uh, these are leftovers. I've kept them because of their unique styles. I've kept a few uh, in my workshop at another area of the workshop, another uh, cabinet. And this is uh, the jointer I developed with a hawk iron. So I learned how to make these uh, 22 years ago, 2002 to 2003. I was actually make, doing this and marketing them. I remember at the time the uh, the whole hand tool movement was just starting, just beginning, and people were were uh, were keen on acquiring wood body hand tools. So I'll put that here. I'm not sure if this is set correctly, but. This is what a jointer does. It's not quite as long as a number seven, but it prepares the wood. The nice thing about the wood body ones is they automatically glide. You don't even need to apply any lubrication or any wax, but I do it anyway. And this, uh, the issue with this particular board as there's a huge knot in the middle, so it's got a little squirrely grain going on right here. And that's the direction of the grain actually reverses between here and here, so it's kind of rough. But you can see how smooth it is everywhere else. So what I'll do is I'll apply some. Do you have any uh, questions? Please shoot them right now before this, I don't know, this ends automatically, or do I have some extra time afterwards? So I apply some, some tool wax again with the sole. Let me see how that makes sense. Really enjoyable to use these planes. You can see the, uh, the ridges leaving the or slowly disappearing. So this is how it, it was done. There still is if you don't uh, want to invest in machines. Preparing, uh, preparing boards for furniture making. So it's quite uh, labor intensive. <laughs> you can see why, why people sort of uh, migrate towards machines, towards uh, per preliminary processing. So once I've done that, I uh, get a straight edge. This is a small version of a straight edge, but I have longer ones, and I usually test this, uh, have a look at the, uh, from side to side to see if, I'm, if I have any uh, high points. And if you're uh, working with a board this size, probably need a much longer straight edge, and I have some. But the idea is just to go along and measure, see if all the high points are disappearing. So it's quite labor intensive to do this because it's not only uh, you're not only making the surfaces smooth, but you're bringing it down to thickness. And if you're not using uh, a machine, you can imagine 
starting with a board like this, and if you need uh, two inches and it's two and a quarter inches, the amount of the amount of hand plane you need to perform. So again, it's a machine a thickness planer will shine at this as long as you don't destroy too much of the board. So I tend to use my uh, my hand planes mostly for in the latter stages, and I do, I'll do some of this if it's in an exceptionally exotic wood or something, but uh, I'm more often than not, I'll pick the machine. Another thing is actually for the flatness, this particular board. There's a little bit of rock in there, so I need to find out where the high point is and eliminate that. Same thing here, it looks like the rock's on from left to right, so I need to, there's probably a high point right here. So what I would do is get that scrub plane out or remove or hog some wood out from, uh, from the center section here until I, and then I keep keep measuring it with the uh, long straight edge until the uh, straight edge is uniform. The gap between the board and the straight edge is uniform from one end to the other and across. I can use a shorter one for that. And then you know you'll have a good uh, reference surface. And once you have a good reference surface on one side, you can begin, begin to thickness it down. And then again, go through that process. And uh, again, it's quite labor intensive. So you're, if you're creating small, small work, you can get away with it. But if you're creating large furniture, it just you know, it depends on how much time and how much you enjoy doing that. But once you've done it a few times and you master it, you tend to, uh, you know, it's just labor intensive work. Good exercise though. So, <laughs> and the type of different type of workbenches and uh, face vise that I've been using today, and an end vise on this particular workbench. So I use my face vise as a tail vise, and uh, so you don't you know using this system, you don't necessarily have to have a uh, a tail vise. But then again, it depends on your or your your uh, hand orientation. I'm left-handed, so this works for me.